Hello and welcome. My name is Chris Pearson and today I've got a little treat for you. We are going to look at a website, Cernovich.com, which uh, has just been graced with a new design. And we're going to analyze this new design in terms of performance and also just sort of uh, in terms of the way the design is presented and how that might affect uh, visitor usage and the way people uh, use the website. Okay, uh, let's, let's dive in. So the first thing to note is uh, this website used to use a theme called Genesis. It is now using something else. Um, we can check the source here and see what it's called. I think it's called the MVP or something like that. Oh, Zox News. Zox News is what this is called. So whatever. I've seen this uh, also on a golf site that I uh, use pretty frequently. Let's check it out. It's running on golfwrx.com. You can see that it is the same theme, but with some some different modifications, and it's used a little bit differently. Uh, I kind of see this, and I think I think uh, I think the general perception is that this is sort of a newsy uh, type theme. But uh, we're, as we go through this analysis, you'll see why uh, choosing something like this is maybe not in your best interest. Uh, it may, in fact, may put you in a situation where you have to do extensive customizations and anytime you you find yourself do, performing extensive customizations everything becomes more difficult and harder to manage over time I'm talking about things like plugin integrations maintaining your design responsive design stuff when things change or when you integrate new stuff in the future the bottom line is not always a good idea to uh, choose something that you perceive to be super feature rich because you end up uh, dealing with a lot of complications down the road but let's not worry about that right now. Let's take a look at Cernovich.com and check it out in terms of performance and usability, all right? So the first thing I do when I analyze a website for performance is actually click around on the thing. I like to see, do the pages seem pretty snappy? Uh, there's a little bit of a chunk there with the load you might have noticed where some stuff sort of wasn't appearing and then it did appear, the image, also this header area. Uh, you know, I click. I found myself clicking around here, and it's a, a little bit of a delay there with the click. It's not super snappy, but it's not bad. It's not bad. Uh, the home page especially seems to load pretty quickly. Interior pages uh, look like they're taking a little bit more time. This one, this one jammed. I think this one's already in my cache, to be honest. Um, but bottom line, so we are going to. So I, I will pull up a page like this. I'll do my little. You, you know, just clicking around type analysis. Okay, this is pretty fast, it's, it's okay. And then I run it through something called web page test to really get an idea for the specifics of how the page is loading and what is going on. And so when I ran the performance test for the home page, uh, it's pretty good. The load time is 2.757 seconds, that's not terrible. That's not terrible, it could be better, yes, but it's not, not the worst. 61 requests, that's medium high. Bytes in almost one megabyte. Uh, as far as web pages go, that's that's uh, on the smaller side of things. But pages can be much much smaller than this. They can be on the order of two three hundred kilobytes. You know, thirty percent the size, and obviously they're going to load much faster if that's the case. And the number of requests can be down under twenty with a with a well tuned WordPress website. But you know, I see some decent numbers here. Start runner at one point three. Uh, you know that's pretty good. That means stuff's going to start appearing pretty quickly when you load up the site. Um, there are some ramifications for this on mobile devices. Um, you know, the slower the stuff is on these desktop tests, obviously the slower it's going to be on mobile devices. And but uh, I want to dive into the specifics here. Uh, but before we do that, so a couple things to note: the first first byte time. This is very good. Mike must be on a very good server. 0.242 seconds is is lightning fast for that first byte. So I like to see that. That's a good one. Uh, image compression only gets a B there, so we might have to look at that in a little bit. Caching static content, he gets a B, that's okay. And he is using a CDN, which we can see in the source. Whenever we see URL references to stuff on the site like this though, like some weird subdomain dot whatever, that's not the current site, his site is cernovich.com, that's what we would expect to see, but we see this different URL, that is indication that this site is using a CDN to quickly serve static assets, CSS files, JavaScript files, things like that. Uh, using a CDN is gonna speed those up tremendously. So he's, he is using a CDN, so that's good. But in this case, uh, and we'll 
I'll, I'll reveal this as we go through this. Uh, in this case, it's actually masking quite a few performance sins that could be fixed. So next up, I want to dive into the waterfall here. But before we do that, let's just see what's on this page. So we've got we've got an image up here for the logo. Uh, we've got some images I, images for these icons. It could be SVG files. I don't really know what those are. Uh, these are thumbnail images. Um, the sizing looks pretty consistent, so I'm going to guess that these are, are just automatic thumbnail crops within WordPress. Uh, automatic thumbnail crops are usually not super, super optimized. These images are not compressed to their maximum extent. So if you just use the basic stuff WordPress gives you, it's not completely optimized. It's really neither here nor there. It's just a point. We've, we have a sidebar over here with an image. Uh, but not a, lot of, not a lot of extra crap on this page at all, to be honest. This is a pretty tight page. But we do have some images. We're going to look at all this stuff in the waterfall view over here in the web page test. Okay, so he's got quite a few CSS files getting loaded up. I don't love that, but it's not the end of the world. These things sort of load in parallel, uh, so they all happen at once. So it's really only as bad as the longest as the file that takes the longest to load. Um, JavaScript files behave similarly. They appear to be loaded asynchronously. And most of the, or all this stuff, like I said, is coming from the CDN. You can tell by the, the URLs there. This stuff is from uh, Google Analytics slash Tag Manager. He's loading up some Google fonts. Uh, in this case, they're loading pretty quickly, and I find that surprising as we'll go into uh, the what is being loaded there. It seems like too much to me. So one of these images, so these are the images now, we moved on, uh, and the, the rest of the JavaScript stuff. So there's... Initial JavaScript loading goes up to here, and then we have a lot more JavaScript loaded on later. So they're loaded in two big chunks, which I find interesting. Uh, maybe one of these are asynchronously loaded, and perhaps these are not. I don't know what the deal is. I'm not, not used to seeing that type of delay where this is the JavaScript files are loaded in two big chunks. Uh, but moving on to the images here, all these purple lines are the images on the page. This image is very fat, took a second and a half to load. A couple of these are, are pretty fat, as you can see. I'd like to see image loading times always be under 500 milliseconds. S smaller the better, obviously. Got some, some more junk being loaded here. Here's some more Google font stuff. So th this was just the initial request up here, and then the actual files getting loaded over here and taking a decent amount of time. And we will see why. Uh, too much stuff is being loaded is, is really the answer. Uh, let's see, we've got some more web font stuff, more JavaScript stuff. This is Google Analytics running its collection process on the back end. And we have a faulty reference here to a fav icon that does not appear. Okay, so we've got some issues. And the page is, uh, you know, the page was pretty fast. Let's look at an interior page, though, because you can't just test the home page because there's different types of pages on a website. In this case, uh, Cernovich is running a sort of a news style site, so it's important to click through to his particular articles because when he shares URLs to his site, he's probably going to be sharing specific URLs, specific articles, and these are the pages that people are going to be landing on. So really, it's more important to analyze the performance of one of these article pages like this because this is going to more accurately describe the average user's experience of using this website. So, uh, we, we checked out the home page, 2.7 second loading time, pretty good, fairly optimized. And we'll go into the components here in a little bit, but I want to contrast the home page with the web page test for this particular page, which includes, it's got a big thumbnail, got another image, it's got a video embed, a YouTube video embed, two of them, three of them, these things are fat. It's got a Twitter embed that's also fat from a performance perspective. They do load once the page is already loaded, they, they, they populate, but these things definitely slow down the page, uh, the page load and also increase the page weight. They make the page fatter. YouTube embeds are particularly painful. So here's the performance test for that page. This one loads in 5.289 seconds, so significantly worse. The number of requests has essentially doubled from 61 to 119. The size of the page has also more than doubled. It's gone from just under one megabyte to over 2.1 megabytes. This is putting this page more in line with the rest of the internet, which features a ton of overbuilt pages that take way too long to load. Uh, the Web page test, one of the things I like about this, they give you sort of an armchair measurement about the weight, I mean the cost of a page. Uh, the homepage had a cost of $2 signs, but 
when we check out this specific article page that included the YouTube embeds, uh, this now becomes a very expensive web page in terms of resources that get loaded, time it takes for the, the page to load, the full size of, of the stuff that gets loaded. It's just not a very good page. We'll click through to the waterfall view, and we're going to see things similar to what we saw with the home page. You know, scripts loading, fonts loading, CSS files loading. There's tons of these images. These images are taking a long time to load. All these, four of them are taking over two seconds. One's almost two seconds. This one's over a second and a half. This one's over a second. This one's over a second, over a second. Every, every image on this page, except for one, is taking over 500 milliseconds to load. That's not going to cut it. Those images need, need to be compressed, probably. Uh, here's the, the font stuff. Oh, wow. This is, yeah, we'll wait. We've got uh, two faulty references, probably to that, that fave icon that didn't load in the previous one. We've got a little GIF here that takes one and a half seconds to load. A, a GIF image should be so quick and easy. Uh, but this, this is getting loaded up by something auxiliary on the site. It's getting up loaded by a plugin that he is using. And this is obviously whatever's happening here is, is inefficient and terrible. There's just a little bit of insight into to how things can go wrong when you have lots of plugins on your site. So yeah, there's just a lot going on there. Some, some faulty references, things like that. So the user experience on this page is not going to be, is, is literally twice as bad, you might say, as the home page experiences. It's going to take twice as long to load. There's lots of resources here. This is going to chew through phone cellular data if you're, if you're getting this on a, on a mobile device. So there's a, there's a pretty big downgrade there. But because this page had three YouTube embeds, embeds, I didn't consider it fair really to test that. And so I think we should test a different page that's a lot lighter. This page has almost nothing. Uh, it does have two other, art or three other article references at the bottom. That's sort of unique. We don't often see that with, this is crashing. I don't know why this is crashing, but it is definitely crashing. Huh. Anyway, look, okay, there, there's the page. It just showed back up. But one of the things I find odd about this, about this setup, and I think it's endemic to this theme, which is all newsy. Uh, so you have your basic article, which you would expect on an individual article page, but then you've actually got like teasers to other articles. Continue reading, continue reading. So you wouldn't normally see that stuff on an individual article page, but I, like I said, I think it's a, a, a feature in this theme, but it's going to massively increase loading times of individual article pages, especially if these thumbnail images are not super optimized. It's really increasing the page weight of the page, making it take longer to load. So you, you got to wonder at what point are the additional page views and the, the traffic flows you would get from this, at what point is that no longer beneficial and would it be better just to strip all that and provide the fastest experience for the user? Um, and there's other ways to, to introduce other article links. It doesn't have to be presented as a full-on article like this. It could simply be a little little alert box at the bottom of, of an article saying, uh, you know, check out these other three ar articles, for example. I'll show you something uh, something I use for this, or a way that I do this. We'll go to an individual thing. So I put something like this at the bottom of every post or page. This could be, you know, this could be a little box and it could have links to the most recent three articles. You could do something like that. That would be a lot faster. Not serving images in there uh, would, would improve the user's experience and decrease loading times, which is desirable. So when I test this page, which like I said, doesn't include the videos and the extra stuff that the other article did, we got no real improvement. 5.607 seconds to document completion, 121 requests, 2.2 megabytes. It's a fat page. We still have those problems. And the CDN, all this stuff, you know, a lot of people in performance, uh, or when we're talking about website performance, they really place a high value on caching and the usage of CDNs, but that's really hogwash. This stuff you add at the end after you've already done everything else correctly. Uh, Yes, CDNs and caching paper over performance sins, but they don't completely cover them up, not by a long shot, as we've seen with some of the waterfall stuff. And really far more important than that, far more important is to get your baseline stuff right, load your JavaScript, load a minimum amount of JavaScript and CSS, load them in the right order, load them asynchronously where that is uh, a possibility. And then also with images, it, images are really the most important thing, piece of the performance equation because they can cause such a problem. So it's crucial 
that the images be optimized for performance and compressed uh, before they are loaded up into the WordPress environment. So something I like to use for this is I love image.com. I use this image compression tool. This is great. So when you have an image, you're going to load it to before loading it to your WordPress, uploading it to your WordPress website, run it through this image compressor. You just drag and drop it into here and it will compress it. You download the image and you know, download the compressed version and then you upload that to your WordPress website. If you follow that procedure, every image you load up is going to be super optimized. You're not going to see these incredibly uh, drawn out loading times for images. Like this is totally unacceptable. These are all, these are, these are all bad. And look, some of these aren't very big. 300 by 152 taking almost three seconds to load. Like what the heck is that? The total size of the image is only 11.9 kilobytes. So like, eh, I don't know what's going on there, but I don't, I don't like to see that. Something is wrong with this when, when we see this type of thing happening. It's no bueno at all. These aren't even big images, but they're taking forever to load. Uh, so I, you know, that that's that's making me concerned. Like, there's something else going on here. If basic stuff is taking this long to load, I don't know if it's a problem with the CDN. I don't know if it's a compression thing with the images. It sort sort of doesn't look that way. Hard to say. Hard to say. The server is using gzip compression. So a lot of pieces are in place for performance, but the result we're getting is really not, uh, it's not optimal yet, not by a long shot. So let's now look at the HTML source of the homepage to see if we can spot some things that are you know, problematic, things that could be better. So I flipped over to the HTML source. I see some things I don't like already. WordPress adds this emoji support script and CSS to the top of every, uh, to, to every document head. Doesn't need to be there. Serves no purpose in 2020. That could be removed. We've got Gutenberg block library styles. Now I, I looked at Mike's uh, HTML sources before, do, you know, before doing this video, and I see that he's not using Gutenberg, so he doesn't need these. Uh, so he wouldn't need either of those two. He's using the Contact Form 7 plugin, which loads a bunch of crap on every page of your site, even if the email opt-in forms don't appear on every page. It's a ham-fisted way of doing it. I dislike the plugin for that reason. It has skated on popularity for at least a decade now and uh, hasn't really had enough pressure to improve, I think. He's got the Social Pug plugin. You know, is it worth the price of admission? I don't know. I generally think no. Lightbox thing for viewing images. He's not really presenting a lot of images in, in a gallery view format, so I'm not really sure this Lightbox plugin is, is necessary. I don't think it's serving a very critical purpose. I would probably remove it. Then he's using something called MVP. I don't know what this is. Some of you may be familiar with it, but it is adding a buttload of inline... Or it's, it's not inline CSS, but it is CSS that's injected directly into the website head in this manner. I don't love it. It's not, it, it could be minified at a, at a minimum. Uh, you know, that is what it is. I don't know what's serving that, but that's kind of, that's kind of fat. We've got a Font Awesome declaration. Font Awesome is a heavy resource. It's big. There's a lot of kilobytes that get loaded onto the page. And this is probably for these icons. But there's only a few icons, so like the way I do this, there's a search icon, there's another triangle here. The way I do stuff like this is I pick out the exact icons I need. I only load those up as sort of a uh, high maintenance approach to doing this, but you only need to do it once. Um, I use a thing called Ico Moon to create, a, I use the app here, and I create little sets of icons and only the ones I need if this thing ever loads up. It doesn't matter. I just pick out the ones I need. I export them, and then that's what I load up on my site. Instead of uh, Font Awesome, which is going to load up over a thousand icons, I just load up like the five or six that I need, and then I'm serving something that's six percent the size, and I save save resources that way. Next, we have a Google Fonts inclusion, and this is coming from MVP, whatever this MVP plugin thing is he's using. And this is weird because this is a very uh, heavy-handed way to include uh, a Google font. He's using Advent Pro and Clatten. No, that's C Latin. Okay, so it's just Advent Pro is the font. But th this, uh, look how big this declaration is to include these Google fonts. It's a huge, huge, huge thing. And it's loading up the font in different languages. A uh, Roboto is also getting loaded, I see, and also PT Serif and Oswald. Uh, the character subsets are Cyrillic, Greek, 
uh, Vietnamese, all the stuff. It, not necessary there. He doesn't have a language selector here on it, on the site. There's no reason to load up anything beyond just the English language characters because that reduces the file size that you load significantly. And also, there's no reason to load anything except for the regular weight, the bold weight, and the italic. So 400, 400 italic, and then 700 would be the three weights that he would need to produce everything that he does in his content. So this could be massively reduced, and I will show you uh, what a, a more tight reference would look like. So here's what uh, a, a more sane Google Fonts reference looks like. This loads up the 400, 400 italic, and 700 faces of IBM Plex Sans, and compare that with what I showed you here, this huge thing that's loading up lots of extra characters from lots of, la lots of languages that we aren't even using here. It makes no sense to do this, it's totally inefficient. This is what a good one, a good Google Fonts inclusion reference looks like, an efficient one looks like. So we've got some more media queries, CSS. This is for responsive design. I'm sure that's just a mess to deal with with this theme and plugin environment. We've got MailChimp top bar. That's a plugin that provides this thing up here with the email opt-in. jQuery is being loaded up. Jetpack's on here. Jetpack is fat. Loads up a bunch of crap. Uh, it's got some more CSS. This is just, you know, this is a lot of, a lot of junk so far in this website head compared to this one over here for an e-commerce website, a very, uh, a very uh, fully featured e-commerce website, I might add. This document head is tiny. All these references are really tight. There's nothing that's crazy verbose. And then we go over here and we see like, what is all this stuff? Look at all this, really? That's a lot of information on every single page of this website. Uh, that alone is gonna, you know, optimizing the head is gonna massively improve the loading times on every page of this site. This Google Fonts thing, this really needs to be cleaned up. Uh, I don't love all the JavaScript. There's a lot of optimization that could be done there. I think it's probably using too many plugins, a lot of which could be could be removed. Clean Archives reloaded this thing's loading up JavaScript that's relying upon jQuery. That's heavy. These are not just easy decisions. These are big performance decisions. It would be better if, you know, things weren't relying upon jQuery, for example. Uh, he's got uh, the Google Global Site tag included for um, for Google Analytics and also for whatever else he's doing, any, any sorts of tracking through Google Tag Manager. Uh, we've talked about the images and the way those could be optimized. There's a menu. I don't see anything too, too terrible there. I don't like the order of some of this HTML. A lot of non-essential stuff is being presented before the content. It used to be you really wanted the content to come out first. Uh, look at all this extra HTML and these comments in the HTML. This increases the size of every page. This is called cruft. So cruft is anything that appears in the HTML markup that doesn't need to be there, but it increases the size of the web page. And there's just no reason to include things that don't need to be there. If these comments are here to make this theme more flexible. So it includes all this nested markup just in case you want to use it for crazy customizations. Like this is so much structural crap that doesn't need to be there. I look at this and my eyes start to twitch. This theme is garbage. I don't, I don't need to know any more about this theme than what I've already seen. It includes all this extra crap that doesn't need to be there when the reality is if the theme were really good, it, there would be a really tight nested structure. You wouldn't have repetitive elements. There's nothing in here that doesn't need to be here. This is the entire HTML source for this page. This is it. This is what it should be. And this is garbage. Look at this. Look at this nested cascade. Look at this crap. Are you serious? Blank span tags with nothing inside them? Like to, to a professional, I, I look at this, I'm just like, oh my God. But like people don't see that. They, they see, you see the website, you're like, yeah, okay, this looks all right. It's like, no, take a look under the hood. What the F? So anyway, we keep going here. We can see lots of, lots of largesse, lots of crap, lots of cruft that doesn't need to be here. And like I said, some of the decisions that have been made here are dubious ones, and they're probably being made by the theme, it didn't give you a choice, but like these articles getting included after the article, this is just aimless browsing stuff. This is, this is what people mindlessly click on when they're not really engaged with what is being presented on a web page. 
So that's really it. There's there's more JavaScript that's getting loaded here in the footer of the web page, which is the, where most JavaScript should be loaded up. Um, when WordPress, when a plugin is loaded into the WordPress environment and says, hey, I'm dependent upon jQuery, I need this loaded too, WordPress takes no chances and loads jQuery in the document head, even though this is a render blocking script that's going to slow the loading of every single page on the site. WordPress takes no chances for compatibility, loads it in the head in a manner that is improper, and that way, any plugin that injects its JavaScript that's relying upon jQuery, the jQuery will already be there, so there won't be any issues. But really, all this stuff belongs in the footer. Some of this stuff is in the footer. Thank goodness, the theme at least did some of that stuff right. But that doesn't mean that that code itself is good or that it's going to be efficient. So we see all this extra stuff. This is JavaScript that's getting directly injected. MVP, whatever that plugin is, it does the CSS and JavaScript this way. You know, I just, uh, I'm not liking what I'm seeing here. So it's no surprise when we look at those web page test results that there was some, some strangeness with the, the way things were being loaded. We have tons of, tons of JavaScript files and CSS being loaded. That's coming from these plugins, coming from, uh, you know, all the stuff that's being run in this environment. When I look at this website and I say the reality of it is, you know, like he doesn't have a sidebar here. He's doing a lot of things right presentationally. Okay? He's not giving you just a bunch. He's not giving you a bunch of crap. He's not giving you a bunch of stuff on the left and stuff on the right to consider. When we look at this type of thing, this type of uh, web page presented this way, our eyes go to the left. This is called the visual anchor on the left hand side, and our eyes dart out to the right uh, with some a uh, high degree of regularity. So this this would be a hot spot. This kind of eye path right here would be a hot spot going from here to here, really here here and over to the left side of, of this headline. And it, you would see a high correlation of usability going up on these spots. And then you'd see some darting out over here because this, this arrests your attention as well. Your eyes get pulled over here and then maybe you end up paying attention to this and not what's over there. You can't pay attention to both of these things simultaneously as you, as you go down the page. And that's one reason why if your goal is to lead somebody through a very sequential process or get them to consume a very specific message, you don't want to be presenting these horizontals because you can't, can't track it all as you go down the page. So that's why I think this article page is actually better presented because there is no sidebar there. It's not asking you to split your attention between the main item on the page and something else. It's saying, this is what's on the page. Just go straight down. I like that. I think that this presentation down here, all the stuff after the post, like here we got a link to this, link to the same damn thing right after it. So this could be cleaned up. That's not optimized at all. Why is this stuff presented this way? How about three links uh, without these images and without the, you know, the, the bylines and stuff? We don't need that. That's just adding to loading times and making it visually confusing for the user. Like, am I on this article page or am I on the how to think, I, think about coronavirus page? It's not clear. So you kind of see the deal there. Uh, the pages are not nearly as optimized as they should be. In fact, uh, I don't have the testing results. I didn't save them. I didn't know I was going to be doing this video you know, three months ago. I didn't know I was going to be doing this video today. But I remember looking at Cernovich's old site, and it was faster. The pages loaded in two to three seconds rather than this 2.7 to 5.7, really three to six seconds now pretty much. Uh, the pages used to load faster. Uh, he did have a sidebar on some of the uh, you know the interior pages, but that, that's stuff that could be cleaned up and optimized. I think he actually is operating in a worse environment now. The HTML source looks worse. So although he has spruced up the website, uh, in my view, he's taken a couple steps backwards. I don't see how this is better. Um, experience suggests this is this type of thing. You know, oh, culture, uh, these these tag ways to browse a site through categories or tags people don't use that anymore that's not what we do the way we use websites now is we click through to specific article pages from links in emails or social media so the presentation of these pages needs to deliver on the promise that we uh that brought us to the site in the first place we click through on a promise to say hey i want to see this you know, the link was to this. And if the page doesn't deliver that thing immediately, it's a failure. So this site is delivering on the click through. It does have some stuff I think needs to be cleaned up. There's a lot of links and decision making stuff at the top of the page. This stuff takes a while to load. You've got these, this link goes to a password protected post. 
I, I mean, you know, the, this this whole nav nav menu uh, requires a lot to load. I'm not sure how germane it is to people who have just clicked through trying to look at specifically this. You know, so we've got a lot of stuff happening here that is distracting. It's, it's asking for the user's attention. We've got some actionable elements that could also keep people, uh, get them off task and in unproductive ways. Um, I don't see how having people browse around aimlessly really helps Mike's cause here with um, conveying information and enhancing the linkability of his content. But uh, this is stuff that, that you know you really need to think about. You need to think about the visitor's transactions and exactly what is going on. Visitors are now clicking through, looking for specific things, and they want to be served quickly and clearly. And this doesn't mean that you don't have opportunities to make upsells, to get people to opt into lists, or do things that are productive for you, or to drive them to other content that you really want them to see. doesn't mean that at all. It actually means you have a streamlined way to do that now. You can make very simple decisions instead of more complex decisions that take into account my sidebar, these links at the top, this kind of thing. You can just instead present people with the article and then a couple, you know, give them no options, just give them the ability to go top down, straight down the page. And when they get down here, you can give them a simple decision matrix, maybe with three things, say click on one of these three things. Check out this, check out my podcast, check out this other thing. Those types of information flows are simple. They ask very little of the user. They're not uh, requiring the user to sort of balance, uh, you know, to say, to uh, consider three different options in their mind at one time or multiple things at one time. It's just a very simple, you got down the page, okay, now take an action or leave. Those types of arrangements tend to work really well and actually cause a, an increase in page views and intera interaction all over the site. So for example, when I changed my website, DIYthemes.com, to this top-down approach with no sidebar, I actually experienced a 27% increase in cross-traffic through the site. So while I had fewer links to other content, I actually had people moving around the site more. So presenting visitors with fewer options and more clear linear navigation pathways actually resulted in them using the pathways even more. So there's so much stuff like this that's sort of counterintuitive, but the bottom line behind all of it is extremely simple. Present visitors a very clear, very simple thing. Don't overcomplicate. Just because we have all this horizontal real estate on web pages doesn't mean that it's in our best interest to use it in that way. We have to consider does this stuff sever attention? Does this type of content and the way I want people to consume it, does it match with the way I'm presenting this here? These are the sorts of high level questions you need to ask. These are all part of the performance equation because the way your website works uh, for visitors, how effective it is for visitors is one piece of performance and speed and optimization. That's another piece of the performance puzzle as well. So this is all the stuff we wanna consider. You know, I hope you enjoyed this analysis, and uh, I think for Mike's sake, I think he's sort of taken one step back here, but that doesn't mean that uh, he can't improve things from this point forward, but I do think that this overall environment needs to be streamlined in the ways that, that I presented to you today. So both uh, from an organization and optimization standpoint, you know, behind the scenes, under the hood, and then also presentationally, this could be tidied up to serve his audience better. All right, thanks for watching. Uh, Check out the links in the description below the video. I'll send you over to, uh, to my website where we can talk about the focus ethos and I'll show it to you here. I've got a masterclass on this stuff, all the stuff I presented to you today. We can learn about how to, it's a free thing. It applies to any WordPress website, really any website. Uh, and you can go deep on these principles that I've talked about here about sending people directly through your content and creating more significant connections with your audience when they visit your site. All right, check that stuff out. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next video.